Let's get physical, it's Jordan here, back in with this week's releases. March the 11th until the 15th, let's see what we've got on the Switch. Kingdom Come Deliverance is releasing physically this week on the Switch. I think this is probably going to be one of those miracle ports that we haven't talked about much in recent years. There was always that like Doom or that Witcher game that popped up every now and again to get game article writers something to talk about, but I feel that slipped away a little bit. There's not much excitement for this one, even though I think it looks pretty cool. Well, okay, it's probably gonna look like arse on the Switch, but we don't know that for sure. I've always wanted to be a stinky medieval peasant, or at least stab them, so that's interesting for me. And I'll probably pick this up eventually on my Xbox. And our executive producers, Isa, Totally Grateful, and God of Resin have chosen this as their pick of the week. But if you want this Switch version or any of the retail releases in this episode, then please consider using the links in the description. You can purchase from VGP and that's a fantastic way to support us because they have good prices and cheap Canadian money and have cheap shipping to the US and even free shipping worldwide if you purchase over 80 Canadian bucks, which is like 60 American dollars. They have lots of good stuff over there. They recently got in the Castlevania Advanced Collection as well as Radiant Silver Gun that's probably sold out by now, but you know. Plus, if you purchase something with my link, then each week you will be in with the chance of winning a $10 discount coupon and this week's winner is Chong SJ. Thank you ever so much. Congratulations. Yes, you will get an email from VGP in the coming days if you haven't already with your discount coupon. Thank you. Atari Mania is releasing in Europe this week. Yes, you do remember correctly. Limited Run did this a while ago in North America, but Atari, they need a bit more dosh to keep up their momentum of taking over the gaming industry one unremarkable takeover at a time. The comeback is on. Actually, this looks, you know, like a pretty fun game, to be fair, as a micro game collection going through Atari's gaming history. So, yeah, interesting concept. PJ Masks Power Heroes Mighty Alliance is releasing this week. And if my PJ Masks lore is on point, which I'm pretty sure it is, <clears throat> uh, this looks to be a fine Avengers Assemble version of that. It looks a bit pants, of course. It's not really for me. It's a platformer with some shakeups in the gameplay once in a while when outright games found a few pennies in their washed jeans to add to the budget. A quick mention to two Tessura games releases, which almost as they always do, they just kind of sneak out under their non-existent placeholder dates. We have both Stonefly and Creature in the Well on the market right now in Europe. Stonefly looks pretty cool. I really like the concept that game is going for. You're like a tiny machine beating the crap out of insects. Good stuff. Creature in the Well, I played this one and reviewed it for the channel many moons ago. Kind of a random release considering it already had a physical release in North America through I Am 8-Bit, but you know, it's a cool action puzzle game that has you whacking energy balls around. Nice stuff. As it's Tesura, both of these have standard editions and collector's editions available. Lawn Mowing Simulator Landmark Edition is the only game anyone needs this week. I mean, once you've finished power washing your truck with Power Wash Simulator, what's the next step to waste your bank holiday? Mowing the lawn. I mean, I mean, people go on about the destruction of the Amazon rainforest because Brazil needs more rubber and tofu to send to China, but how about the endless chaos in your home backyard? How much wildlife are you depriving of a good home because you want to sit in your garden twice a year when the weather's alright and you're a bit bored of Netflix? There would probably be snow leopards in Scotland if the lawnmower didn't exist. Whoever invented that, what have you done to nature? And our executive producer, Cartoon Soren, has chosen this as his pick of the week. La Mulana 1 and 2 looks to be getting a reprint in Europe this week, outside of its collector's only edition that came out like years and years ago. This is just a simple case and a cartridge, that's nice, because it's not an easy game to get a hold of. Garden Life, a cozy simulator, is releasing this week as well. Oh yeah, if you finished mowing the lawn, how about decorating it with stuff like flowers and stuff? I don't know. It's cozy. It says it on the tin. Grab that blanket. Grab your wellies. Yes. All right, the low print releases. Thunder Ray is PlayAsia's latest exclusive going up for pre-order later this week on Thursday. This is a great looking stylish game that's going for some Punch-Out vibes, which is good. We all need some more Punch-Out games in our lives. And in fact, this isn't the only game that they've done like this. Many moons ago, they did one of my favorite indies called Pato Box which was super interesting in the fact that it had an adventure mode. This doesn't seem to be like that. It seems more simple and straight to the meat kind of game, which is a shame, but I'm sure I'll still enjoy it. You can get a standard edition as well as a collector's edition on Thursday. If you want it exclusively at PlayAsia, you can support us at the same time. If you come back then, 
click the link below and that's fantastic and we can support you too with our discount code jordan24 Rugrats Adventures in Gameland is a game that seems like it should have existed like 30 years ago, but somehow never did. Old Joshy Boy living out his childhood fantasy by funding totally random anachronistic retro licensed tie-ins that never actually existed. And I say, fair play, I would do exactly the same, although maybe with something a bit more manlier than Rugrats like Teletubbies. So this is a limited run game release and there are quite a few collector's editions available on their website. Of course, they're going to milk Tommy more than he milks his mommy. That's disgusting. But this is also a bona fide retail release as well in a standard edition. You can pre-order it from VGP right now. Yes, you can buy limited run games and support me at the same time. I almost want to vomit, but hey, I'll take the cash. I've got Teletubbies N64 JRPG to make. And our executive producer Producers Alex M, Punky Dooster, and Thorn Metal Luna have chosen this as their pick of the week. Overlord Escape from Nazrik is Limited Run's other game this week. This was a Japanese exclusive import from like two years ago or something. Quite a few probably already have it in your collection. It's a great little Metroidvania game, I had a lot of fun with it. Even though I had no knowledge of the franchise, it's good gameplay. The issue is Limited Run have it for 40 bucks. And I bought mine for 20. Yeah, this is why if I ever complain about Western publishers taking out English, it's because Japan almost always offers better value for the consumer with discounts compared to limited releases in the West. With limited run, that almost never happens unless it sells extra terribly and they're desperately trying to get them out of the warehouse. But yeah, there is a standard and collector's edition available on Friday. Alright, we're heading into the imports, Play Asia territory. Yes, please click the Play Asia links below. As I told you, we have our discount code, Jordan24, for a discount 5%. But I've told you that already. There's not that much this week. Uh, yeah, Macross Shooting Insight is releasing in Japan this week without English despite it being originally advertised as having English. Being pulled at almost the last minute, which is a super worrying trend these past few weeks. This was the most advanced warning though, so it's not too bad I suppose, it just sucks because well, why not, aside from misled greed from potential Western publishers? Anyways, conspiracies aside, this looks like it's going to be an interesting shooter where English would be nice, considering it stars the Macross team, or whatever they're called, but perhaps not essential. This is mixing up both horizontal and vertical shooting in one, and it looks super cool. There's a standard edition and a collector edition, both of which have already sold out on Play Asia. And our executive producers, Robotech, Parsnip Coffee, and Instacritic have chosen this as their pick of the week. But before we move on, there is another issue with another game that was advertised as having English, but now the publisher has mysteriously backtracked on that idea. Assault Suit Lanos 2 Saturn Tribute was supposed to have English in the Japanese release. I've mentioned it like two or three times in various videos. Well, sorry guys, but English has been taken out of the Japanese Switch release and is being saved for the upcoming Western release via Clear River Games, also known as Limited Runs European Donkey. So yeah, I immediately cancelled my order and I will not be buying it with practices like this. It's a shame because it was super affordable too, like 25 bucks. Let's see what the greedy Western publisher asks for it. Gotta jack up that price for that English privilege. Only the West has English speakers, despite Asia probably having more English speakers than the whole of America. But oh well, as I said, this is a worrying trend this year. Goblin Slayer, Macro, Scarlet Symphony 2, this game, and I already told you about Tokyo Psychodemic being a bit of a worry. I mean, what's going on, guys? All right, let's go into the community spotlight. Now, there are so many photos, obviously, what we're doubling up the week. So, yeah, a slightly different angle this week. Let me know what you think. It's a mix between the main part and the roundup. It's a many roundup, okay? Andrew R. sent in this photo with a stylish looking Japanese cover of Damon X Machina. Ashura G. bringing in some good story heavy games. Fox Girls always win. Bill R. raided Axis Games' personal store when they had a great sale recently. Bridget F. sent in this photo of Castle Crashers, which is going to be a very sought after item in the future because it sells out super quickly anytime they get it. Bunny Bear got in the collector's edition of Ray's Arcade Chronology, the Japanese version, so no need to wait for Strictly Limited. 
Executive producer Cartoon Soren got in a mostly depressive bunch of games like horror, scary, miserable stuff. Happy days! Chew it got in Trash Sailors, which is like 15 bucks on Play Asia right now. I almost pulled the trigger on that myself. Choco Loco James got in Hebereke 2, also known as Euphoria in the West. Crit Cat reminded me that I need to play more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. It's so good! Dennis and Vicky sent in this, and I do wonder which one of them wants to pick up girls in dungeons. Dominic W sent in some excellent imports, I still love Saga Frontier. Easy Mode Nerd got in the silver case, which I really, really want to play sometime, that's my kind of retro goodness. Esoteric Camel got in some very nice RPGs in this bunch of games. Executive Producer Feig got in East 8, and it was nice to hear that East 10 was announced for a Western release coming soon. Executive Producer God of Resin got in Shadows Over Loathing, a very popular purchase from our affiliate links with the VGP, thank you so much for your support. Executive Producer Instacritic got in the Carmen Rider game, one of the imports that's not easy to get a hold of these days, unless PlayAsia got some restocks that I didn't see. Executive Producer Jennifer M sent in this Super Otome picture, I can, I can sense the ovulation happening in this photo. Kevin W sent in this double helping from Play Asia. Nice choices, thank you for your support. Crestalike showed off Anima, which if I remember correctly, is a European exclusive game. Liga Zero definitely got their Gundam on with this one. Top effort there with the imports. Mickey McFlynn sent in Shirin. Check out my impressions video on Physical Paradise. Really liked this game a lot, as you would expect. McLaren got in the Japanese Collector's Edition of the new Shin-chan game, which is going to get an English-Asian release very soon. This Japanese release does not have English, sadly. Mirin sent in this. It is, uh, I don't know. It doesn't have English. That's the only thing I know about it. Morality sent in a classic JRPG. Oh, and Chrono Cross as well. That's cool, too. Mr. Matt Hobb got very sentimental with these couple of VNs. Needless Dragon got in Elder Rand. Elder Rand, okay, Rand, not land. Executive producer Precision Play got in two Unicorn Overlords. No doubt one to play and then one to beat home intruders to death with. Absolute unit. Radio to Rancid showed off the condiment crisis. You get what I did there? Rick Menso decided to forego the home defense aspect of Unicorn Overlord by showing off the lovely contents. Thank you. Our Luna got in some evergreen classics. Robin H showed off my second least favorite publisher. I hope the background is the location. You're going to bury these in the ground. Skip to the end. Got a game that limited room customers have been waiting like two years for them to send out. Just buy Asian guys, just buy Japanese, okay? So you get it quicker. Starvey sent in a super rare game that they charge like 300 quid for just for a laugh. I still can't believe they did that. Theo is just a legend. Pure, simple goodness. Trufflas nicely showed off all the angles. Not sure even my wife can look that seductive. Executive producer V showed off the big disappointment of Goblin Slayer having no English. I'm sorry, man. It looks beautiful, though. I mean, look at them playing in the pool. I hope that polar bear didn't take a dump in it. Yoon sent in that triple pack, which I, I, I wish had English, but sadly it does not. Zero Flux, making us all want to kneel before and worship the behemoth. And all right, that is it. What did you think? I don't know. I'm still not sure. Send me pictures at Twitter. So what about game? DM me if you can. I heard that some people can't DM anymore. I don't know what's going on. Uh, you can email it, switchwatchspotlight, gmail.com. And our Discord, the server link is below. Only send me one picture per week, guys, okay? And yeah, thank you for watching. If you watched all the way through, please leave me a boxing glove emoji in honor of the Thunder Ray. Special thanks to our executive producers, Dane Wilkinson, God of Resin, Boom Box, Brent McLean, Santa Tartaruga, Alexander Kato, J Cross 7776, Punky Dusa, Cartoon Soren, Robotech Z, Raven Knight, Thorn Metal Luna, Parsnip Coffee, Isa, Vey, Mental Traveler, Off Phone, Jennifer M, Ins Critic, Precision Plague, Karacha, Totally Grateful, Alex M, and Feeg. And thank you to my voice for surviving this long. I'm not feeling so good, but I'm powering through. Please check out some of our other stuff. Please uh, check out a bit more Jordan, because I recently did in my, in my Dreamcast adventure. I did Rainbow Cotton, which is going to be a Switch game in like, I don't know, sometime this year. So if you want to know what that's all about, you can go see that. And also check out Physical Paradise. I've got a new series going on over there. It's a bit like this but for new announcements, like not for games out this week, but things that have been newly announced, and not only for Switch, for Xbox, 
and PlayStation and anything else, okay? Please go check that out. It's been quite popular. Like, one of the episodes I did got more views than one of these. What's going on? I don't know, but yeah, okay. Have a good one, guys. Take care.